and welcome to Try The Thing. Uh, today I'm doing a fun craft, actually. So, back in the day, there's there was this TV show called The Carrie Diaries, and it's supposed to be Carrie Bradshaw from um, Sex and the City, which is a TV show I didn't watch. It wasn't my cup of tea, I guess. Um, but The Carrie Diaries was, because it was set in the 80s. Oh my god. And I just, I really liked the show. It was fun, kind of you know, a little different, and I really liked the Carrie character that they used, you know, for that TV show. And anyway, so there's this part in the show where her sister accidentally spills white nail polish on Carrie's black purse. So turning a negative into a positive, Carrie decides she's going to go for that paint splatter look all over her purse, and it just, it looks really cool. She uses nail polish, like, on all of it, and I just thought, you know, what a fun idea. And years ago, I actually did make one. I was stupid enough to leave my purse unattended at a bar. Genius, right? But anyways, I really miss that purse. And I have been wanting to redo this project. So I found the perfect little cheap black purse at TJ Maxx. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today. And I'm gonna show you all how to do it. And I encourage you to make a paint splatter purse yourself sometime because it really does look unique and cute. And it's probably one of my favorite projects that I've ever made before. So I'm here, parked actually right by the TJ Maxx, but there is also a Michaels and a Dollar Tree right there, which I'm gonna check for more nail polishes. I still have the neon color nail polishes from last time, but I just wanted to check, you know, maybe they have some new colors I might wanna add to this purse. Anyway, so it's gonna be mostly neon colors. I have them here some red and of course white which is what uh kicked off the idea for carrie in the beginning of the tv show when she got white nail polish spilled on her purse so and the white really looks good it just it really pops against the color of the black purse so of course you need white in there but you can use neon colors pastels whatever you feel like but i really liked the the bright loud kind of i don't know the 80s was so loud so I think loud colors just kind of fits. And anyway, so that's what I'm going to be doing. We're going to go to Dollar Tree first, check for some other colors, and then maybe get some gloves at Michael's. I don't know if Michael's has gloves. If not, I'll go to Home Depot and get some gloves because we need some gloves. We need to put down some, you know, plastic on the floor so that we don't get nail polish everywhere because this is going to be messy. Anyways, stay tuned. So, major score, the Dollar Tree did what I needed. So I got some plastic latex gloves. This is for gardening. I know the latex gloves are for gardening too, but look at these fun colors they had. That, look at this bright pink in between purple color and a lighter purple. Because I didn't have any purple in my last one. So this is gonna turn out looking pretty cool. I'm really excited. All right, so I went to Michael's and I got some gold paint and stuff for my mom. But yeah, I really think this gold paint is going to pop with those other like neon colors. So hopefully this is going to turn out really cool and funky looking. All right, these are the things we're using. I have my $12 little Betsy Johnson purse that I found at TJ Maxx. Yay. These are the colors I used last time. The new colors I bought at the dollar store. Why do I have a nail polish remover and cotton balls? That is in case I get any on the nose or on the little metal ears or on the little chain and I wish to remove it. You can use newspaper or plastic, which I have put down here. Um, I just remembered that from another project I had some left over. I have a paper plate, it's biodegradable, um, for putting the gold paint on and as well as a little bit more of that white from earlier because I like using little specks of the white which is what the old toothbrushes are going to be for. We're going to be doing the old technique of this to get little teeny tiny little specks which I liked the look of last time. Uh, my cheap dollar store gloves. And why do I have scissors? For the same reason I have the newspaper and I have my rotating cake turner. Obviously not necessary, you could just rotate it yourself if you wanted to like this, 
but since I have it, I want to use it. And hopefully my plan is to just very slowly splatter the paint. Obviously the newspaper is going to be cut to size and placed on here and I'm going to slowly rotate this and then just let it dry on there. So that is the plan. Let's hope it turns out. It will. I just, I'm hoping my new little technique will help. Anyways, see y'all in a bit. Shake up that white. And start. Looks good so far. Let's spin you around. Make sure you change directions in which you splatter. Spin around. to let little dots hit too. Go ahead and continue on with other colors. I was having a bit of trouble with the pink so I put it on the paper plate and used an old crafting brush that I had. Also a good little cheat if it's not doing exactly what you want it to. You can always just dot on little details in blank spaces if you want. I did that with the pink and the green a little bit because those colors were older and, well, less easy to control and they didn't want to splatter as well as the others. So, yep, here I am adding a little bit of details myself with the green, adding little fun dots. And last but not least, I am applying more of the white because I did love the white the best. And I'm using the toothbrush method to do the teeny tiny little specks. All right, everything's dry. I even let it dry so that I could do the bottom. But, um, so right now I'm in the cleaning phase. I'm using the cotton rounds from earlier and I soaked it in a nail polish remover. And I've just been cleaning up stuff like the nose, which you can probably see I already cleaned up. And I cleaned up this ear. Now I just need to do this ear and figure out how to clean up the chain because the chain got pretty splattered. So anyway, I'm going to work on that and then I'll show you the end result in a little bit. And so the finished product, this is how it turned out. I did all of it, including the bottom. It took quite a few days for it to dry, but the only thing left to do is the little part on the inside now. But I just, I needed to give this maybe three days fully for it to dry completely but I will do the inside in a little bit. But anyway, so this is the finished product. I can't wait to wear it out. And this was really fun for me. I've made one before, but I used less paint. I like the look of using more paint rather than less. And I hope you enjoyed this video and give it a try yourself.